Good morning and welcome to LPC Online. My name is Pastor Doug and I wanna take this time to thank all of you for joining us, especially those who are watching for the first time. If you would like to connect with us, you can go to our website, listwillpc.com and send us a message. Thank you again for joining us and we hope you have a great experience. We're joining each other in interesting circumstances. And we know that there are many people, maybe friends, maybe families and loved ones that we're aware of who are going through difficult circumstances. And I just wanna take this time for us to be able to bring them before God. As we're gonna be entering his, his time with worship, it would be beneficial for us to make sure that everyone has the chance to know that they are cared for and they are loved and that they're in God's hands. If you do me the, uh, the privilege of joining with me, let's say a word of prayer for God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being sovereign. Thank you for being powerful and you being above all things. Help us to have the capacity to place our trust in you because you have earned that trust. You have been faithful and you have been true. We pray, God, that we would learn to be placing our trust in you, especially in the midst of our uncertainty and these challenging circumstances. And we take this time, God, to lift up each and every one of the families, friends, and loved ones that we have that are going through difficulties and strange challenges. For the people that are, that are handling health concerns, for the people that are going through financial difficulties, Father, we just take each and every one of these circumstances and we offer them to you. And may we have the capacity, God, to trust you fully, that we can come before you with the freedom to worship you with joy and with confidence because we believe you are working in these situations and you will be able to perform great miracles. So we ask and we pray for these things today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're gonna be entering into a time of worship and the first song we're starting with is Because He Lives. And this is a song of declaration and a song of great joy. Because God lives, we can face anything that comes up tomorrow. We'd love for you to join with us. Thank you.
Most believers will be ready to admit that Easter is a great victory and one that we can actually share in. But most people don't understand exactly what that victory equals and the fact that there is more than usually meets the eye. Most people will be willing to admit that Jesus' life and teaching during the final Holy Week were incredible for God's kingdom and showed us how to live for God. And most people are willing to understand that Jesus' death accomplished atonement and redemption. We were able to be forgiven of sin and most people are able to say Jesus' resurrection was able to give us a new life, being born again and be able to share eternity with God. These are all common victories that people are able to identify and see the impact of. But there is so much more to the Easter story than meets the eye. And one of the things that I've learned is that Easter is a great victory. It was God's victory, but it's also transformed and changed our reality in more ways than we are understanding. And so I want to focus on a couple of those ways that are often overlooked or not associated with Easter. And the first of which I'm going to be looking at is a story that is included in all of the different Gospels. And it's made to be very important, important enough that they, they felt it was necessary to be included in the time of Christ's final moment. And we're going to be looking at Mark's account. Mark's account is going to be found in 15, uh, Mark 15, verses 33 to 39. And so I'm going to be reading that passage right now for you. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so that he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see if Elijah will come down and take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And then the curtain inside of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he explained, this man truly was the son of God. I would love for us to be able to say a prayer so we can understand what the significance of this story is and the part that we're going to be focusing on today, the impact it has on our life. If you would do me the honor of just bowing your head and closing your eyes as we say this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great victory. Thank you for the fact that you were willing to send your son to die for us. And Jesus, that you were willing to surrender all things and sacrifice yourself so that we could be forgiven and redeemed. But Holy Spirit, we need your help today. Help us understand what this means for our reality, the impact it has on our lives, and what this means for us today. We ask and pray for all of this in your name. Amen. Our reading today was focusing on the final moments in Jesus' life. Mark does a, a very great job of focusing on the pain and suffering that Jesus was enduring in these final moments. But there is an element to this narrative that doesn't seem to fit, something that seems out of place. And what is unique and interesting is the Holy Spirit thought it was so important that he inspired the majority of the Gospel writers to include this in their narrative of Jesus' death. Do you know what part of the story I'm referring to? I'm going to be looking at verse 38. In the middle of discussing and talking about how Jesus is having his final moments, Mark includes a statement of a fact 
saying, and the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple of God was ripped from top to bottom. Strange that they would include this in the narrative when it's not even taking place in Golgotha. It's in a whole different setting, in a whole different place, but yet it is vital to this part of the story. It's vital to the Easter story. And I think that we need to understand why this is significant, why the tearing of fabric is vital to a story and means a great victory for God and a whole change of reality for us. In order to appreciate this fully, we need to understand the old covenant and the reality that people used to live with. It used to be that people that wanted to encounter God, people that wanted to experience his presence, had to go to a single place. The temple was the connection place that was established by God. But even when people went to the temple, it was to worship him and sacrifice from a distance. God's presence was very exclusive. In fact, only a single person was ever allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies, and that was the high priest. All the sacrifices and all the, the ministries that were done inside of the temple were reserved for the priests to do that. But even within the priests, only the high priest was the one that was able to go into the place where God's presence dwelled. And I think that that is very different from the God that we hear about and the God that we experience today. The New Testament God that we see is very different. He's a God that is open for all people. So why was God so exclusive before? Why was God like this? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what changed? And I think in order for us to appreciate this, we have to realize that God is all powerful and completely holy. Him being exclusive was an act of love for people. He wasn't trying to be distant and hard to reach. He was protecting people because he cannot have sin in his presence. When sin is in his presence, it must be eliminated or pushed out because God is that holy and perfect. And so him distancing himself from the people and having them build this curtain to separate them and form a barrier was an act of love. He was trying to spare the lives of all of these imperfect people. And I think that that's very important for us to remember. This was God being loving and kind. He was trying to have as much of a presence in the middle of this world and with these people as he could, but he didn't want to make their lives be threatened. He didn't want to end their existence. He wanted to have a relationship with them. And until the perfect sacrifice was done, that was impossible. And so what we need to understand is that Jesus' death on the cross was a great victory because he was the perfect fulfillment of the sacrificial system. And his blood was able to cover all sin for all people. And then God was able to eliminate the barrier and the need for that separation and distance. And that's why I believe the imagery is given to us that the veil tore from the top to the bottom. It was God ripping it apart so that it was coming from him in heaven and that it was eliminating this distance between us that we could encounter God face to face. We could have a relationship, a personal relationship with him. There was no longer exclusivity. There was no longer one individual that needed to be the representation. Now Christ had become that high priest for us and we were all granted free access into the presence of God. This is where the reality shifted. And this is where things became totally different. Christ's death became a greater victory that we could encounter now a God and have a relationship with him on a personal level. And I think that this is so incredible because we need to understand what this means for us in entirety on a theological level. Paul does this beautifully in Hebrews 10, verse, uh, starting in verse 19 to 22. Listen to the words that he says. And so dear brothers and sisters, we can now boldly enter into heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest with 
uh, who rules over God's house. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting in him. For our guilty conscience has been sprinkled and covered with Christ's blood to make us clean and pure. And our bodies have been washed with his pure water because of Christ's atoning sacrifice, because he was the perfect lamb, the spotless lamb, we have been completely forgiven and his righteousness has been given to us. This is why we are able to boldly enter the throne of grace. This is why when the veil finally tore, that the people that would have experienced this would have been terrified and fearing their lives, but no one died except Jesus because his righteousness had paid the price of their sin. They were redeemed and forgiven, and they were able to now encounter God on a personal level. They were able to encounter him face to face, and we have been given this reality. This is the life that we have, and unless we appreciate the old way, the way life used to be, we don't understand the incredible gift that we have been given, the amazing change that has taken place transformationally so that we can have a relationship with God, that we can worship him freely and our praises reach him in heaven, that we can enter into his presence whenever we want, whenever he is receiving us, we have his presence with us right away. In fact, the new temple isn't a building, it's each and every one of our hearts. The Bible says that God has come into our hearts now and dwells with us. So we have no barrier separating us from our God. He is walking through life each day with us today. And that is incredible. This is why I believe Easter was an even greater victory than most people realize. And why most people fail to understand the full extent of what Easter accomplished. God had a great victory and it changed our reality. Our lives and our world are forever changed. We now have relationship with God and there is nothing separating us from his love. I wanna say a, a prayer now, a prayer for us to be able to be reminded of this, but also have the joy of understanding what a blessing this is. If you would do me the honor of just bowing your heads and closing your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace and for your love. Thank you for giving freely your son so that we could be forgiven and redeemed. And Jesus, thank you for sacrificing everything, freely giving up your life, that our sacrifice could be paid, that our atonement could be fulfilled. Not because it's just some sacrificial system, but because it allowed us to have a relationship with you. There was nothing separating us now from God. The veil had been torn and God's presence was available for all people. Thank you for the incredible miracle that that is. And help us never to forget this, that we would always strive to enter your presence and dwell with you every day because it is such a blessing and a gift. We ask and pray for this. And for all the people that are joining us today, may they experience you in their life today and from this day forward. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have a, a benediction that I would like to say over us as well, and it ties into this theme of God being in our hearts and the incredible miracle it is, and how we're called to trust God for the price he's paid. It's taken from Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. And Paul is saying to the believers there, may Christ make his home now in each of our hearts as we place our trust in him. May he grant us the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep God's love is for us. And I think this is an incredible experience of how much he loves us, that he would do this for us. And Paul ends it by saying, may we experience the love of Christ and be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. And I ask that for each and every one of the people that are watching today, may we encounter Christ and understand the loving Father we have, and may we feel his presence each and every day. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we pray that you have a blessed day.